The Honourable Chris Vincent. Mr Speaker, I move that the Ngāti Tuwharitoa Rokawa and Te Aroa River Iwi Waikato River Bill be now read a third time. The presence in the gallery of people representing those iwi to witness the third reading of this bill is testimony to the bill's significance, to the significance of the Waikato River to these iwi and not least to the contribution iwi are going to make to the co-governance and co-management of the Waikato River. The overarching purpose of this bill is to restore and protect the health and well-being of the river for present and future generations. The bill complements the Waikato Tainui Ropatu Claims Waikato River Settlement Act 2010 and provides for Ngāti Tuwharitoa Rokawa and Te Aroa River Iwi to participate in co-management arrangements that recognise their enduring association with the Upper Waikato River. The recognition of the vision and strategy for the river and the establishment of the Waikato River Authority and the Waikato River Cleanup Trust are provided for in the bill uh, and in the Waikato Tainui Ropatu Claims Waikato River Settlement Act 2010, having been agreed in the deed of settlement between Waikato Tainui and the Crown, and the bill now makes this link clear. Um, you may be interested as the local member, sir, that Waikato means flowing water. And given that the waters of the upper Waikato River flow into the lower parts of the river on their way to the sea, it is appropriate that this linkage is made. Under the deeds signed with the iwi, there will be a review of these arrangements in five years' time. The review will be informed by effectiveness monitoring and reporting undertaken by the Waikato River Authority, and it provides an opportunity to ensure that the membership of the authority is structured in the best way possible. This review is also provided for in the Waikato Tainui deed and the recently signed Maniapoto deed. At the committee stage of the bill, the Honourable Nanaya Mahuta asked whether elected members of the Iwi Trusts who are appointed by their trusts to be members of the authority would cease to be members of the authority if, before their term expired, they were not re-elected to their trust. In this situation, their term of membership of the authority will continue until it expires. In this regard, the bill reflects the arrangements requested by each iwi and agreed to in their deeds. This is no different to the position of any other member of the authority who, before their term has expired, may find themselves in changed circumstances in relation to their appointer. Uh, if this matter causes any issue over time, it can be reassessed when the arrangements come up for review. In relation to the joint management agreements, there's provision in the bill for the Rokawa joint management agreements to include matters relating to the upper Waipa River. Uh, this was again something uh, the Honourable Nanaya Mahuta raised during the committee stage of the bill, and I want to be clear about what that means. The decision to include the upper Waipa River within the overall co-governance framework was for the Crown and Maniapoto to make, given the preeminent nature of Maniapoto's interests in this area. And recently, uh, Maniapoto and the Crown agreed to do this. Rokawa has interests, including Marae, in the Wharepuhunga area within the catchment of the upper Waipa River. The bill ensures that with the recent inclusion of the upper Waipa River in the framework, Rokawa joint management agreements with the relevant local authorities can cover matters relating to their particular interests. This provision is confined to Rokawa interests and does not enable Rokawa joint management agreements to cover any matters relating to the extensive Maniapoto interests within the catchment of the upper Waipa River. I am advised that Maniapoto and Rokawa have already discussed these issues and how they will manage them, and I think that's a very good way forward. Mr Speaker, with the passage of this bill, 
the earlier enactment of the Waikato Tainui Ropatu Claims Waikato River Settlement Act 2010, and soon the introduction of a Maniapoto Bill for the Waipa River, a comprehensive co-governance framework is going to be in place for this vitally important river system. The main features of the framework in the bill include a single co-governance entity, the Waikato River Authority, with five Crown appointed members, including two nominated by local authorities and an equal number of members appointed by the Waikato River and, and Waipa River Iwi, ten members in all. There's a single vision and strategy setting the direction for the management of both rivers. It is incorporated in the Waikato Regional Policy Statement and the bill contains robust provisions for community involvement when it's reviewed. Joint management agreements provide for iwi to be involved in the development of the regional policy statement and regional and district plans. These arrangements are backed by a significant contestable clean-up fund. The framework reflects the aspirations of iwi to have a meaningful role in influencing policies relating to the river, not just, just as another group within the community, but in a way that's consistent with their mana whenua status and their relationship with the Crown under the treaty. The arrangements reflect iwi aspirations to share in managing the Waikato River in a way that sits well with their concepts of kaitiakitanga and mana whakahaere. The economic and social structures around the Waikato River and within its catchment are complex, uh, they're long established and they are very important to this country. The river and its catchment is characterised by a multiplicity of interests, private, public, iwi, central government and local government, with the need to recognise a wide range of community needs related to things like access, ownership, use and extraction. Eleven territorial authorities have discretion over plans and consent processes that affect the river and catchment and some 20 Acts of Parliament are identified in the Bill as being immediately relevant to the river. This complexity has meant it's been essential to get the model right and I'm indebted not only to the pragmatic approach taken by iwi representatives but in particular to the panel led by Evan Williams who provided sage, well-considered advice that allowed us to refine and improve the framework to get the arrangements set out in the Bill. I believe that these arrangements will achieve their purpose very well. Mr Speaker, today as we usher in a new era of co-governance over the Waikato River, we acknowledge our common road forward. The time has arrived to put aside the shortcomings of the past and to usher in a new era based on inclusiveness and shared aspirations. This bill and the deeds on which it's based are the culmination of the dedicated and determined efforts of many. On behalf of the Tuwharitoa Māori Trust Board, Sir Tumu Tuhuhu, Timi Tuhuhu, Te Kānawa Piteroi, and the Board's Secretary, Rakepohu Tairoa, have provided wise and constructive counsel along the way. Ngāti Tuwharitoa has been so ably represented throughout these negotiations by Dean Stepping. For the Rokawa Settlement Trust, Chris McKenzie, Stephanie O'Sullivan and George Rangatutia have worked tirelessly to ensure that the Crown has understood their people's aspirations. The team representing the Te Arawa River iwi has included many senior and respected members of that iwi, Te Arawa interests have been capably advanced in these negotiations by Roger Pikia and Eru George, assisted by Nero Panapa. Many others have been involved, and although I haven't mentioned them by name, I acknowledge their contributions. So in conclusion, sir, can I say that I believe we can be satisfied at, at what has been achieved in setting up sophisticated yet streamlined co-governance models for the Waikato River. We can be optimistic about the future with its focus on such a positive goal, including the health and well-being of the river for present and future generations, based on consensus and collaboration and an enlightened approach to contemporary treaty relationships. I commend the bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. The Honourable Nanaima Huta.